Yeah, this thing could burn my garage down. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> let's hope not. We try to be careful. Anyway, I wanted to finally get this video out. This is kind of a long time coming. Um, some of you are aware that I have been working on doing a diesel burner for my furnace as opposed to running propane, uh, which I had used for years, especially in my smaller furnace. It worked great in my small furnace. But when I built the bigger furnace, I started having some trouble getting things hot enough to build a melt. I can melt aluminum, okay, that wasn't a problem. But melting things like copper and bronze and, uh, and then eventually iron, it, it just, I couldn't get it hot enough. And the reason being was the volume. This volume of my new furnace is, is a lot bigger than my smaller one. And if you look at uh, any in my old furnace or even the devil forges that are out there today that everybody seems to be using, uh, the crucible takes up the bulk of the space and the flame ends up hitting directly on that crucible and uh, consequently it heats up really quick because you're not heating a lot of air, you're not heating you know, a lot of furnace wall, anything like that. I wanted a bigger furnace because I wanted to be able to do bigger projects. That's why I've got a bigger furnace. Now, because of that, I did also I wanted to go to uh, a diesel burner just because diesel burners have about 50% more energy potential, I call it that, potential, than uh, a propane burner. Diesel runs at about 135, 137, something like that, thousand BTUs. Propane runs somewhere in the neighborhood of 90,000 BTUs. So we're about 50% more energy in the same amount of fuel running diesel. Uh, propane runs me about three fifty a gallon here in the states where I where I live. That's the best price I've found. Uh, diesel is right around three twenty five a gallon. Yeah, the price is insignificant. But here in Colorado, um, propane's a problem in the winter time because you know, my garage gets really cold, and when I start using a propane burner and propane tanks, those tanks tend to freeze up really really quickly. Uh, and I ended up having to put a big tank of water in here, and it just started taking up space, and it was just, it's just a pain to deal with. Diesel just works. I just turn it on, and it works. Now, I started off uh, trying to build a drip burner. A lot of guys are running drip burners, uh, or uh, burners where they're pushing it in with compressed air, things like that. I, I wanted something that I didn't have to preheat. And when we see this thing light, you're going to be... I think you'll be impressed uh, with the way it lights. Uh, a lot of the, the drip burners uh, have to have either an external burn chamber or heating chamber, uh, require a propane flame to heat the thing up and get it to where uh, the diesel will burn well. This one, I can just light it. It just works. So I got the bench cleaned off. I got the burner on the bench. Let me take you over there and kind of walk you through what I got. We'll put it in the furnace. We'll light it. I'll show you that. And who knows, maybe we'll melt some metal here too. All right, I'm going to try to stay out of the shot. <laughs> I'm going to try not to do this to you. So, anyway, I'll stand off to the side here. This is my uh, diesel burner that I that I built. Uh, I'll just kind of take you through the pieces, starting at the easiest end. Uh, I run forced air. I've got a blower that that I run, and I needed. I printed this adapter to go from this size to this size, and just it just nice nicely sits on here and I can blow air in uh, to the furnace. So, uh, number one, I also put uh, on here, I told you I wouldn't stand in front of the camera, and here I am, uh, a damper on here. I tried to run variable speed or variable voltage. Uh, this motor's not designed, it's an AC motor, it's not designed for that, and so it just didn't work well with me using a dimmer switch to try to cut the voltage down and, and slow it down. So I ended up building, again, printing a little flap for this thing so I can just cover up the input and I can start it off with very little air and then open it up as I need to, as I need to trim out the flame. Uh, this has worked out really, really well for me. In fact, uh, I can do this while I'm just standing here. I can just kind of touch it with my foot and move it around so uh, all this sits on the ground. 
So that's the first part of this thing, is just this blower. And um, let's see, I think I've got a thing here. I'll take a picture of the part number for you. I'll put it, uh, I'll put it up here on the screen. If you wanted to, if you want to get this same burner, I've seen this burner online. I actually, uh, a friend of mine gave this to me. I kept trying to pay him, and he wouldn't take money for it. <laughs> but that's the uh, that's the blower. Now, onto the burner. Let's move the camera again. the The burner has basically not a lot to it. It's just a tube, right? It's just this is actually exhaust pipe, uh, and it just gives me enough to push air through it. And then I've got this a quarter inch threaded nipple. Um, first thing I've got on there is a, I put a, a connector on here. So I've got the, a little barbed uh, fitting on here that I can push the, the this, this uh, fuel line onto and then tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Um, that's what this, this piece is here. It's just a little barbed um, connector. Comes down through a quarter inch black pipe nipple. Uh, I think it was 18 inches long, I think is what I ended up buying. And then we get down to the business end of this thing. So that, that will just bring the fuel in and the fuel comes, stays in that tube right out to here. Put an adapter on the end of it. It's just a brass adapter that adapts this thread to a thread that I could use uh, for a, uh, a check valve. And that's what this piece is right here, from here to finger to finger, thumb to finger, whatever. That is a check valve. And I put that in there because as I'm pressurizing the line, I wanted it to be able to open and spray fuel in. But when I turn off the, I've got a fuel pump, you'll see in a minute. When I turn off the fuel pump, I wanted that to check and not just have fuel dribbling into my, uh, my furnace. When I first built this thing, I had a problem with that where I would turn off the fuel pump, but all the pressure in that line would just keep running into the furnace. And I was actually soaking my furnace walls with, with diesel fuel that wasn't, it was either burning or not, you know, very rich or it wasn't burning at all. And there's a problem. This check valve has fixed that problem. Um, and I'll put all the parts on here that I, I bought all the stuff off of Amazon and you can, you can see what it is. Uh, the next thing is, and this is the key, is, this is the key part right here. This is a Delavon uh, oil burner nozzle. This one happens to be two gallons per hour is what this sprays out. Now these things come in different uh, angles and different uh, fuel ratings. Like I said, this one is a, this is a two gallon per hour. That's what I'm running now. Uh, I started off with a gallon and a quarter uh, and then I moved to a gallon and I think a gallon and a half, I think is what I did next. And they're like five bucks a piece, five dollars a piece are cheap. And that's where the fuel gets atomized and it gets sprayed out. Now, another thing is you'll see like on here, there's a 60 degree on this one. Uh, that is the angle at which it will spray out. You can get these things in wide, you can get them in narrow. Uh, 60 degrees is working well for me. Now, I also uh, wanted this to be in my furnace but I wanted it to be back. I didn't. I wanted the fuel to spray into the furnace, but I didn't want the tip of the burner inside my furnace. I wanted it back from my furnace. So this is actually just another piece of uh, exhaust pipe. I took it to a muffler shop and they actually stretched it for me so it will fit over the end of this thing. And so you can see now this goes into my, my furnace and you can see that the, the tip is is well inside there. It's maybe you know, an inch, maybe 25 millimeter in from the end of the burner tube. That gives me enough air. I can get move enough air through here. The air and the fuel will blend. And when it goes into the furnace, it is ready to burn. And that's it. That's, that is my, my diesel burner. Uh, I love this thing. Let me put it, put it into the, uh, the furnace. We'll light it and show you how, how wonderful it actually works. I forgot to show you one other thing. This is my fuel delivery system. Uh, this is just actually a fuel pump that uh, I got. It's, I think it's for like a, either a small motorcycle or for uh, even a moped, if you remember mopeds. Uh, I've, I'll put a link to this up on in the description as well. It's just a small little fuel cell or fuel pump. I'm able to just drop this down into the tank, um, my diesel, my tank of diesel, and it will pump the fuel through the line 
out to the end of the burner. So that's the, uh, that's how I get the fuel to my burner. No compressed air, nothing, no drip system, nothing. It's just pump it here through that nozzle. It atomizes into the, into the burner or into the furnace and we light it. Okay. I keep, <laughs> I keep forgetting things to show you. Um, this is just a little control box that I built. Um, that has the ability for me to turn on power to everything else here. I've got a switch for the blower. I've got a switch for the for the fuel pump. This is what I'm running for to power my fuel pump. I bought this at a thrift store. It's just a small little uh, DC power supply. It cost me, you know, three bucks, something like that, two and a half dollars. I don't know. It was cheap. And I just plugged that guy in there. Uh, I'm able to then turn on, turn on the main. I can show you for example, so nothing's happening here. Uh, but if I turn on the blower, so you can hear the blower running, uh, that's how I control this thing. And I'm able to keep this all kind of over here on the bench away from everything else. So now I think we can go show you the burner. So there is my fuel tank, the yellow tank uh, with the fuel line, the fuel pump just dropped out inside it. You see the burner or the blower attached to the burner and then my furnace here in the foreground. So let me go ahead and light it up here and show you how it burns. Remember I talked about how big this thing is. Uh, if you look again, if you look at any of the other, a lot of the furnaces that you see on the online, uh, this crucible, this size crucible would fill, almost entirely fill the, uh, the space. Uh, with mine, clearly, <laughs> It doesn't, right? It doesn't get very, it doesn't even come close. Now I have started to offset my crucible in here so that it is actually being impacted by the flame directly. And I find that it heats up a lot quicker that way. I don't have to stand here and heat the whole garage uh, when I'm doing it. So let me go ahead and get this thing lit and I'll show you just how, how simple it is. Now, I also want you to notice too, before I light it, um, there is a little bit of soot in here, and that just comes from, at the very end, I still end up having uh, some diesel that's burning out of here that um, is just burning very, very rich because I'm not forcing a lot of air into it anymore when I shut it down. So let's go ahead now. I use a torch to light it. I could use, I could use like a burning piece of cloth or something if I wanted to, but I don't. All right, so I'm going to turn the main power on. I'm going to turn the blower on. You can see I've got it shut off. I'll open it up just a hair, just to give a little bit of air for this thing. And then we'll go ahead and turn the fuel on now. And there it is, it's lit. Now, you'll notice that it's probably burning very, very rich here um, because I'm not pushing a lot of air. I can just open up the uh, damper and we can start to get a little more lean flame. And, but it's burning immediately, it's ready to go. Add a little more air. Now, when I, of course, when I shut the lid, it'll burn even more efficiently because it'll heat that space and the diesel will atomize uh, a lot more. So let me shut the lid. I'm gonna show you a couple things about smoke. Okay, so here it is running. You probably, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is actually black smoke, smoke coming off through here. That's an indication that the flame is running too, uh, too, too rich. There's too much fuel, there's not enough air. Now if I leave this running, my garage will fill with just black smoke. But we can open up the air. You notice the color of the flame changes. It changed from an orange to more of a yellow flame. Uh, now we're running uh, a pretty good air mixture. If I decide, this is something I learned, if I decide to really open up the air, now, I don't know if you can see that there's white smoke coming off of the, off the furnace. White smoke is an indicator, on a diesel burner anyway, white smoke is an indicator that you are too lean. You're, run, you're, not, running enough air, you're not running enough fuel uh, and you've got too much air coming in. That was something I figured out after a while, that this is actually, when it's running smokeless, and there's no smoke coming off it at all now, 
I can't even smell it burning at this point. It's so clean. That's it. It uh, it just works great. It's simple. To, it's simple to light. It's simple to run. And uh, I'll go ahead and fill this thing up with some metal. We'll melt some metal. I can tell you how long it takes, and we can uh, do a pour. What? You want to know how it turned out? <sighs> okay, hang on. Get that thing off there. Let's see. Mm. I filled it. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. One diesel burner. Uh, simple, simple, simple. Parts aren't expensive. Uh, like I say, I'll put everything down in the description. If you're interested in building one, you can see how to do it. You could probably even make a hotter one if you went to a larger, uh, like a three gallon per, per hour kind of flow rate or something. Uh, I could push more air in mine. So uh, you could probably even get it hotter still and faster. It would be, it'd be insane. And it's easy. I mean, it's so easy. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't settle on this early on. That's it. So you guys have, uh, I wanted to say have a great day, but I have to tell you to be a blessing first, don't I? Be a blessing to somebody. Just do something nice. Just do something nice. You can do that. Unexpected. That's the, other, the unexpected nice thing is the best. Just do that for somebody. You guys have a great day.